Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this video tutorial, it's gonna be simple, but I'm just gonna show you how I get this waving flag effect. So uh, you might learn a thing or two along the way. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. So first things first, I have this flag um, uh, that I designed in Illustrator. So um, it is a vector layer, meaning I could scale this up and it maintains its resolution. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna start by scaling it up a little bit. Uh, this will not work, for example, if you use a PNG image, and I'll show you why. We're gonna be searching for an effect called um, wave warp. And I'll show you what happens when you put it on a PNG image. It cuts off the top um, of the image, and I don't know why, and I can't figure out how to do it with that. So um, your only option if you had a PNG image would be to uh, maybe set that there, set a background layer, Maybe pre-comp all of this together. If I just delete that wave warp, um, if you pre-comp all of these together and then add wave warp, um, it will work. But then you'd have to scale it up and make sure you don't, you know, get the, get it cut off on the sides. Um, so I don't know. I just think it's actually easier if you just use a PNG image or a um, a vector image from, let's say, you know, After Effects or I mean, um, Illustrator, or you could just design it in After Effects. So, anyways. Um, yeah, so we're gonna be using the wave warp and I'm just gonna drag it on. And you can see that when I hit play here, it will wave warp. And I'm just gonna drop the resolution down to half and you can see that it just kind of flies. It does obviously doesn't look very natural, um, but uh, that's a good starting point. So uh, one of the things we wanna adjust is the, wave, is the wave width. So we're just gonna drag that out until we like where it's at, which that looks pretty good. Um, I'm actually gonna change the anti-aliasing here to high because I want it to be as sharp as possible. Um, maybe if I was just viewing it um, as an example, I might leave it to low, but if I'm gonna render this out for a real project, I want it to be high. So um, this looks pretty okay as it is, but it looks very kind of, it doesn't really have too much character. It's pretty cyclic. So what I like to do actually is add, is change the wave height. So let's say I leave that at 10, I press you on the keyboard and see my keyframes. Maybe at two seconds, I bring this down to like, to like six. And then maybe I bring this up to like uh, 12 and then bring it back down, just copy the first keyframe there. And if I hit alt and press on that stopwatch, I could just loop this effect. So just loop, loop out, make sure that um, O is capitalized. And I'm just gonna put cycle, close bracket. Um, for cycle, you need the first keyframe and the last keyframe to be the same. So that's just a heads up. Now we can just take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. Um, I do have a flag pole that I created also. So I'm just gonna drag this in. Oh, for some reason, for some reason I have these these named wrong. Um, I have this comp named flagpole and I have the flagpole called T um, tutorial 73. But anyways, I'm just gonna drag this flagpole in. Um, maybe bring it over to about there. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that this flag kind of bounces up and down on that flagpole. And that's not really realistic. That doesn't really happen in real life. Um, and I can't figure out how to pin this. So you'll notice here that there's pinning. And if I do left edge, it doesn't really fix that problem. It still bounces up and down. So what I'm actually gonna do, oh, also one thing I forgot, the direction, the direction is full 90, but if you actually bring this down to like 115 or 110, it kind of has a little bit more, let me drop down the resolution too. It kind of has a little bit more of like, um, I don't know, it just kind of looks like it's flapping a little bit, a little bit more naturally, maybe 100 or 105. It's not so, you know, rigidly straight. So that's one thing that I like to do. You can notice that the, that the it's kind of cut like that now, as opposed to just straight up and down. Oh, and also you could change the speed, but I'm gonna leave it as one, only because it's one cycle per um, second or something like that. I think it's in cycles per second. And if I reduce it, then it won't be a perfect um, animation. It won't loop properly. So you notice that when this hits 10, it loops properly. But if I change the speed to let's say 0.75, you'll notice it, it'll hit the end and it won't loop properly. So that's just one thing to, to, to consider. If you don't want this to be one, you're gonna need to make sure you move this endpoint to the point that it allows it to loop. Um, and I can't do the math in my head right now, but uh, you'll need to do that 
if you want that to, to work. So, uh, okay, so we need to fix this, this flag bouncing up and down. What I'm gonna first do is just make that pole invisible, which I will rename this layer to pole. Um, and now we just have our flag here. And if I just select all of these layers, hit Control Shift C and rename this to just main comp. Hit OK. Um, bring this up to full resolution. I'm just going to create a null layer, layer new null object. Right in the center is fine. And I'm going to use a tracking tool. So this is built into After Effects. I'm just gonna go to window, Windows, Tracker if it's not already popped up for you. And what this will allow me to do is I can select the main comp. I can go track motion. It's gonna track the main comp. Just bring this down. I'm gonna be tracking for transform as in, you know, movement. And I want position. I don't need rotation or scale. Um, the motion target will be null three. So that's that null layer and I could just hit play here. Oh, what I need to do first actually, um, I need to move this tracking point and I'm just gonna track the top left corner. So if I just move that there, maybe stretch this out, this will just give it, this is the, 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 the track that it's looking for, this is the pixels that it's looking for in this area. So that's just how you track motion in After Effects. And then you just hit play and it will go through and track motion of that corner. So it's gonna take this position information and give it to me on this null object. Now I could have went through and went keyframe by keyframe um, and did it by hand, but to be honest, who's got time for that? This, I could kind of just set it and forget it. It doesn't take a lot of time. I mean, it's not super quick. You can see that it's taking about um, 25 seconds per second. So this should probably take um, a few um, maybe a minute or so. So I'm just gonna let this go, but you can see that this tracking point is tracking the corner um, and it's saving all of these positional points. So let's just re let this go and when it's done, we'll be back. Okay, so this is done. I'm just gonna hit apply here. Um, X and Y dimensions is okay. And let's see, did it add it to, yeah. So you'll see that it, it did add all of these keyframes to the position. So I could just copy this null object, go back to um, my main comp here, paste this in, and you'll see that it follows it exactly what I want. Now, unfortunately, if I do match this flag up to that null object, it will just double the amount of, of movement that we get. So I'll show you what I mean by that because it's, you know, it, it's move, the null object is moving and so is the flag. So um, we don't want to parent it to that. What we want to do is we actually want to create a new null object. I want to rotate, actually no. So I'm going to rename this to controller by the way, just so we know. Um, I'm going to marry this controller or parent this controller to the null four. And I'm going to rotate this null four layer by pressing R on the keyboard. And I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. So now you'll see that that this point is actually moving in the opposite direction as the top of the flag. And that's what we want. So now I could take this pole, or not the pole, the flag and mare and parent it to the, to not the pole, to the controller. And you'll see that the top corner of this will be not moving. So you can see that now it's not moving. So um, now we just make the pole visible view it in full resolution. And I'm just gonna play this out and show you kind of what it looks like. So just with this kind of two second piece, I'm just gonna end it there. I'm pressing it on the keyboard, it will close that off. Um, you, you'll be able to see that, you know, the top of this piece, you know, the flag is, it looks a little more stuck to the pole, which is what you want, want to look. So uh, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please be sure to give this video a like. And if you would like to download the project file, be sure to go head over to Patreon, become a Patreon um, supporter. Uh, there is a, one of the layer, one of the levels is, uh, all the project downloads. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.